live now. Okay. All right. Cool. Here we are. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining the Tech Tips for Teachers New to Remote Learning webinar with Wacom and Stacey Roshan. Um, I am Melissa Ashcraft, and I am one of the moderators for this. Um, before we get started, I am going to take us through a little bit of housekeeping. So we have an exactly one hour webinar and we will save the last 10 minutes or so for Q&A with Stacy. Um, we will be, my co-panelist and I, Nick Smith, will also be answering Q&A to the best of our ability within the Q&A section. So if you could use that section for your questions, that would be perfect. Um, no chat or hand raising, please, because we wanna be sure we devote our attention to the Q&A and, and get as many questions answered. Um, and then Stacy will answer some questions at the end as well. Um, there are a few moving parts to this webinar, one of which is a demo of Pear Deck and how Stacy uses that to engage with her students. So you all on the call, if you choose to, you can be some of Stacy's students for the next hour. So in order to do that, um, if you wouldn't mind going to joinpd.com and using the code AVZQY, um, which is here on this slide to log in, um, she will be using that experience during part of her presentation. Um, she will also share that link again and share the code again. So you don't have to take it all down right this minute, but if you can, um, go ahead and jump over there for a moment while I continue to talk. Um, you have two hosts for this webinar. You have Wacom, and we are a company that's been around for a little bit more than 30 years, and we make digital pens, um, which doesn't sound all that interesting until you try to write with a mouse or a trackpad, and then suddenly a digital pen makes a lot of sense. Um, our pens and tablets and displays that you write and draw on are at companies like Disney and Pixar, uh, Nike, anything you pick up and use or watch is probably made on a Wacom product. Um, and in Stacy's case, and a lot of teachers use Wacom products to help their students um, with any type of written digital work, for example, math and the sciences are really difficult with a keyboard, but um, with a pen, um, it's really easy to use. Our other host is Pear Deck, um, and they, Stacy will show you all about that, but it is an online collaboration tool um, founded by educators to help students with active learning, formative assessment, and connecting with other learners. And then lastly, um, we have um, the person you're here to see, who's Stacy Roshan. She is a math teacher, a director of innovation, um, and she's a book author. She wrote a book last year called Tech with Heart. Um, so if you're at all interested in integrating technology into your work, Stacy is the person to talk to. Her guidance and her teaching has been featured in CNN, USA Today, and the Washington Post. And without further ado, I am going to pass this over to Stacy. Thank you, Melissa, for that intro. I'm so glad you all are joining us today, and I'm excited to share some of my experiences with you today. I'm going to start off by sharing my screen with you guys because um, I do want to have you interact with us on the Pear Deck. If you weren't able to get on, get in yet, I see only 20 people have gotten on so far. Um, you can open that in another tab. So if you are in full screen with Zoom right now, you can just press the escape button and then you will be able to open up another browser window and get on and that will allow you to interact, which is the goal of um, probably the second two thirds of this presentation today. Um, so if you can go ahead and do that, that would be awesome. If you want to just watch, that is fine also. Um, if you have Zoom opened right now and you see, you know, I'm got, I've gotten a little bit smaller and if you want that to be a little bit bigger so that you can see some of the things I'm showing you and see that video, you can extend in Zoom 
if you pull out the corner of your window, you'll be able to make it a little bit bigger. So I just wanna add that in as a tip. I know some people probably have different comfort levels with Zoom. All right, so I am going to continue. If you were not able to get on yet, then you still can see the code and it will be in the top right hand corner if you choose to log in at any time you would go to joinpd.com and type in that code all right so let's get started all right so i'm so excited to talk to you today about my experiences um, it, as a flipped classroom teacher and also as an online teacher now, I realize that many of you here today might be here because of an immediate need. Maybe your school has gone to remote learning. Um, and, you know, what I will share to you today with you today, a lot of it is my experience as an online teacher. And I don't want to compare that to a situation that you might be in today where like you have this immediate need to go to online teaching. I get it. I actually was teaching a face-to-face -face class and it has gone online right now. And the two things just aren't the same. The design is different. The expectations that we set are different. The routines we set are different. I just want to say that up front um, because it's a very difficult situation, but I do want to share some experiences and hope that it can help you also. So I'm going to open this webinar by really talking about how the right technology, when we have it in our hands, it can make all of the difference. I couldn't have dreamed even 10 years ago of being able to do what I'm able to do right now. And a big part of that is just the technology that I have and integrating the Wacom products into my classroom. Um, if you know me, I'm a flipped classroom teacher. So my students watch a video before they come to class. And if I had it my way, you all would have watched a video before you came today because I really wanna dive into the interactive parts and to allow you to engage with me. So the beginning few slides, I will be going a little bit more quickly. I will be following up that you will get an email with some more resources that you can look back on later to learn more. They're more like step-by-step -step tutorials that you can really see through a video. Um, whereas I really wanna focus um, on the experience piece and sharing with you how you can use Pear Deck to actually engage your students and not just talk at your students. Um, so that's kind of some of the goals to really dig beyond that PowerPoint lecture, um, even you know during a session where I am talking to the students and engaging them in a Zoom. All right, so I'm gonna just start with a little bit of background. So this is me starting Flipping My Classroom, which I started back in 2010, and it started out of a need. I had a lot of content to get through very quickly in my AP Calculus class, and I didn't have enough time to really sit with students on a daily basis and understand what they needed. It was more about what I needed to get through. And so that's when I started Flipping My Classroom, and I had a tablet PC at the time, and I was able to write on my screen. However, I that wasn't the actual machine that I wanted. I am a Mac user, and so um, when I learned about the Wacom tablets, then things could really change for me and I could use what I was already using, which was a Mac, and just plug in my Wacom tablet and you know, be able to write on my screen. And in, this is a picture actually, the top left corner is of my students writing. I'm very fortunate that I have a classroom set of the, um, those are the Intuos tablets, it's an older model of them, but they plug it in and then they can write on their screen and I can actually see that happening in real time, which we're gonna get into um, because I merge it with Pear Deck. And then personally, I have a tablet with a display screen and that's been wonderful for both in the classroom, as you can see here, I work sometimes with students and we can have two screens so I can really do a conference with them. We record that so they can take it home and then watch it at their own pace later. Um, and also just for me to be able to have an extended display, which we'll get into more also, but I just want you to kind of see real life. This is kind of how I use them. And then this is another snapshot from my classroom. And here is students writing on a blank screen with their Wacom tablet. And that, what they're writing on actually is coming to my computer in real time. As they're writing, it's coming in in real time. And that's um, pairing it up with 
paired up. So I want to start by asking you if you are on the pair deck, if you could go ahead and go back over to that screen for a second. I know you're also watching me in the screen share, but if you could go back to paradeck.com and let me know, do you currently have a Wacom device? So true is yes, false is no. Okay, so if you look back at my screen, you can see that 22 people have something and 17 don't. So most of us have something, but a lot of us have not used it yet. So I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Um, those of you who do have a Wacom device, what device do you have currently? If you could just type that in. After you've typed it in, you can look back up on the screen and uh, see what other people have. Okay. So I made this one a drawing type because I was really actually interested in seeing how many people who had the Wacom device would choose to draw with their pen right now and tell me versus type. So that was why there's also a text response type that you can have in Pear Deck, but I was interested to see how people would respond. So um, I see a variety of types here. Okay. And then my last question for you before we get into things is how much do you know about Pear Deck? Okay, so it looks like most people don't know anything about Pear Deck yet, so I'll have to stress a little bit more of that when we get to that part. Thank you for engaging with me. All right, I'm going to move us along. And we're gonna start out with the basics. So I'm gonna start out with the non-interactive piece um, and really just show you some of the ways that I kind of make my flipped classroom lessons and the simplest options. So I think that one of the simplest options, especially as a teacher, is a lot of people are using um, PowerPoint already to go ahead and make your PowerPoint and then to just go into present and then you can go into the pen tools at the bottom when you're in the presenting screen and you can choose a pen color and you can just write on your screen. Um, and then that's was how I started making my flipped classroom videos. In fact, I just made a screencast of exactly that. It's not very interactive, but it allows you to write on a screen, which is a great first step. Um, again, I said before I am a Mac user. So personally, the way I do things right now is I use Notability, the Notability app, which is an iPad app, but it's also an app for the Mac. And I prefer writing on that. Um, I have a video which you will get access to after this, um, after this webinar so that you can watch it at your own pace and kind of dive into how I pair those two things together. It doesn't have to be Notability. That's kind of my, I have like a binder of all of my things there. I can mark up PDFs to annotate student work. I can mark up a PowerPoint. I just pull the PowerPoint right in there. If you're a PC user, you might use OneNote and that is a fantastic option especially on the PC, um, but I just wanted you to have this resource for after. I want to do more of the interactive stuff with you guys today because any of this is very one directional. If you're writing on a PowerPoint, very one directional, I'm in charge as the teacher. My students can't engage with me. If I'm writing in Notability, I can make a great screencast, but that's really, I would do for homework for students before. If I have time with my students in a virtual setting, I really want to engage with them and I want them to be able to contribute. Um, and I wanna see how they're thinking also. So that's gonna be my focus. Um, let me ask one more question. How many Flipgrid fans do I have?
Okay, so Flipgrid is, I'm gonna just show this one um, because I see kind of we're mixed. So I'm going to show this one right now. Flipgrid, I'll just go ahead and show you what it is. Um, it's a way to create a grid of responses with your students. Um, it, you just click a, you create, let me show you one for AP Calculus right now. And students can all contribute to this. So they just press that, a green button, and you can see all of their responses on a grid and they all come up. So it's a great way for students to verbalize what they're thinking. If students had these tablets at home, then they can write on their screen um, or they can just take a picture of their work you know, and use their phone if you don't have the technology. But as an educator, that's what I really wanna get into right now. If you have the device, they're gonna just go in here and record a quick little video because what this allows you to do is I can have my video, so hi again, but there's also a whiteboarding option right here. And so this is one of the easiest things to do if you want a quick and easy way to get started. You can record right in there. I can just be writing on my screen right here. I can create a recording and I can just start writing and I can make a very, very quick little video, instructional video. Um, again, I will leave you some resources for afterwards to check out more about how to do this. This is one of the simplest ways to kind of use your tablet for a more instructional video. Maybe a kid is stuck on a problem at home and you're not there to help them. You can just quickly, you just press the record button. That's it, no screencasting needed. And that video goes to your students at the end. You'll be able to click, get a copy of that link. That's all you have to do. It's all in one app. And so again, if we're talking about more of the asynchronous learning piece, this is a great way to partner up, you know, the actual Wacom device with something that allows you to write and get a video off to students so that they can watch it at their own pace. All right. Do I, have I made any Flipgrid fans now? Maybe. All right. That's fun to see. All right, so I'm back on uh, the Pear Deck. And so again, I will leave you with a video resource for afterwards to learn more about how to do that because I know I just talked about that very quickly. Um, and then what do you do for screencasting? I do wanna just mention some tools that I've used. Loom is a tool that is now free for educators forever. So that might be a tool that you look for. Um, it's built in, you can just get the Chrome extension, but you can also get it for your desktop. Um, Screencastify is one that I personally use all the time. It's a Chrome extension and they do have a free upgrade code for teachers right now for until the end of April. Um, I, for creating a screencast and being able to edit it, I use Camtasia. And then um, you can also just record a Zoom session if you want something really simple and then send that to students. In Zoom, there is a whiteboarding feature also. And so that would be a way to create a very quick little screen um, recording, whiteboarding, writing on your screen at the same time. So um, that's just being able to share. Now, even if you're using something like Google Hangout Meet, um, we're using Google Meet right now at my school, there isn't a whiteboarding option. So I know a lot of people don't know what to do about that. My suggestion would be to just even open up a PowerPoint so that you had that, you know, just a PowerPoint without any writing on it, just a blank white PowerPoint slide, and then you can just use the pen tool right within that. So those are just some of my suggestions for how to deliver some of this content to students. Now, which devices would I recommend if you don't have one already? So the two that you know I've kind of shown you that my students have uh, this one, they have the Intuos tablets. So those are opaque tablets and you have to look up at your screen to see what's, you know, what you're writing and where you're writing. It acts just like a giant mouse pad. 
Um, that's the easiest way to think about it. It's like a giant mouse pad, except you can write with a pen, which is obviously a game changer. Um, my students use that. There's some learning curve to it, obviously, but once they get used to it, I have found it works really well. Um, plus these tablets are just fantastic. I mean, the feel of it is fantastic. You know, you can be an artist and use this thing. I'm just a math teacher, so it's way over what I even need. Um, but those are in, you know, the 70 to $80 range. So if you need a more affordable option, that's a great one. And that one also is, there's a model that's Bluetooth enabled. So that's a great option for a wireless option. Now, the one that I'm using right now is actually the Wacom One. So that's with an actual screen. So I have an extended display or I can mirror my display. And you know, for me, it's so worth the investment because I use this all the time. Um, and it is you know, a more seamless feel because I actually know what I'm writing on. Um, it is just my screen. So as I'm writing, I'm obviously writing on my screen. I don't need to look up at a different screen. So that one comes in, um, it's a more expensive price point, but this is the Wacom one would be the least expensive of the display tablets. And so that's why I would recommend that one for teachers right now. All right, so you've kind of been experiencing Pear Deck as a student. Um, and I really want to dig in now to that interactive piece and how I use my tablet with Pear Deck. So those of you, I know a lot of you said you haven't used Pear Deck before. So let me just explain a little bit more about what it is. So Pear Deck is an add-on for your Google Slides. So if you've already created your Google Slides, here's the presentation I was in. I created it in Google Slides. And then you just get this add-on. So you get an add-on, you open Pear Deck, and it opens up this sidebar right here. And then you'll be able to choose different types of interactivity that you want to see on your slide. So let me just make that a little bit smaller. So right here, if I want to ask a question on this slide, for instance, right now it's just a normal slide, but say I want you to be able to type a response to me, I would just click this text button and then it's going to add text interactivity. So when I launch the session, students will be able to type in their response, which is great. But what I usually use is I load them all up with the drawing slides, which you guys got to experience a little bit earlier and you're gonna to get to experience again in a moment. I load them up as drawing slides. And so then students can draw anywhere on the screen. So if they have the tablets, they can do that and I can actually see them writing in real time. And I'm gonna let you see what I see as a teacher in just a moment when we get into that. But that's how Pear Deck works. Then you start the lesson and that's how you get the code that you saw um, at the beginning. So go ahead and just play with me for a minute. I'm a math teacher, we started with that. Go ahead and try and place a red dot on two four, a green dot on two negative four, and then a blue dot on two zero. And this is a draggable question type. Awesome. So if you guys look back up at my screen, I don't know if you have it side by side so you can see both things. You can see all this happening in real time. So that's kind of the power of it. I can see how students are responding in real time. There are multiple views here. So right now this is overlaid. We can see everybody's on top of one another, but I can also break it up into grid view so I can see all the different people in the class and kind of see what they're doing. So I can see, okay, this person's on track, this person's on track, this person right here maybe is a little bit confused. Are, are we going horizontal? Are we going vertical? So I know I can check in with them. I right now I'm showing you what's called the projector view in Pear Deck. So names are not attached, but I have another view where I can go back and see student names. So that's kind of the power of this. I can show all student responses without calling any individual student out. 
Let's move on to something a little bit more fun with the pen. So on this one, you have a drawing type slide. So I'm asking you, what does X equal two look like? And as just a little bit of a hint, um, I might have given you a hint by having you plot those dots a moment ago. So if you look up here, you can see how I can see everything coming in in real time. I can see students drawing in real time. I can see what they're writing as they are writing it. I can see who is slow to respond, who might be deleting their responses. Maybe they're confused. I know I need to give them some individual attention. Confused, you know, doesn't, it's just like knows where to start, but doesn't know where to go. So I can get all of this information as students are working in real time. So, you know, if a student doesn't have a, a Wacom tablet at home, then I'm limited in the types of questions I can ask them. This type of question would be great. They can draw with their, um, just with their mouse, that's not a problem. But if I want them to really be solving math problems, they really need to pair it up with a Wacom tablet or some type of drawing, you know, so that they have a pen to actually be writing. Um, let me go back and just show you because this one will be great in an overlaid layout so I can stack all the answers on top of each other, see if we have some type of consensus. And if I need your attention back here, I can say, you know what, I just locked your screen so you can see you can't draw anymore. I've locked that ability and I, that's a little cue to bring everybody back to my screen so we can all pay attention um, to whatever we want to discuss as a class. So I kind of talked to you about, you know, the multiple views. So there's the student view, which is what you're seeing. There's a projector view, which is what you're seeing on my screen share right now. And there's also a teacher dashboard. And that teacher dashboard, you can consult after class, or if you have another device, you can look at what individual students are responding. And that would have people's names attached to it if they log in. So when you're at home, obviously, you know, right now, if we're working in a remote learning setting, then you will not be able to be live on a projector in your classroom, but just think of that projector view as your screen share view. So are you ready to just take it up one little notch? Um, hopefully we're doing okay. Should I pause? Um, is the chat going all right? Hi, Stacey. Yes, the chat is going okay. Um, you do have two open questions that maybe you want to get to at the end. So we're, we're keeping track of those open questions. Sounds great. All right. So I'll just continue here. Um, and so, you know, I think that something that's really powerful about kind of using the right technology. So that was what I started with. When you have the right technology, it's like magical. Um, I think, you know, we can still see individual students in a remote learning setting. We can still see individual students at home working. We still can kind of have this interaction, the teacher-student interaction through emails, maybe through, you know, a chat like this. But how do we preserve this student-to-student -student interaction? How do we preserve that peer-to-peer -peer learning that is so, so important? And so to me, that's where pairing up the Wacom tablet along with the Pear Deck is so magical. So even, so, you know, if you can get this into the hands of students, it's amazing. I will say in my class right now, my students didn't get to go home with a Wacom tablet. So I don't have that for them. They had it in the classroom. I don't have it, I have to be a little more creative, but I still have the technology so I can still writing on my screen and allowing them to see all that handwriting. And I can be a little bit more creative with how I make my Pear Decks so that students can still contribute. Because I think what's really important is that we get to see the work of everybody in the class. So again, this is when I was teaching my online class. This is the teacher dashboard. So the uh, student names are here. I've blurred them out, but I wanted you to be able to see what it looks like. So I can be looking at this as students are working. And in real time, I know what student I need to get to, what student I need to message privately, what student needs my individualized attention versus just knowing the class needs. 
So that's them working at home. They all have the Intuos tablet and you can see how well they're able to write. This is them doing their AP calculus work. I can also get a snapshot of like, all right, this kid is working. They've done all this. I took the snapshot in real time. This kid has done all this work. Well, this kid is still drawing a picture. So they're really stuck on getting started with this. And I can just see, you know, where they are with all this material. I think that's one of the hardest things about being remote is that we don't know how students are starting problems. Are they fumbling to start? Are they fumbling to finish? Where in the process are they getting stuck? And so this gives tremendous insight into how students are working through problems. It's not just that end result that I see, did they get it right? Did they not get it right? I can see where they're getting stuck, where they're pausing, where they need my help, because maybe they are able to draw the picture, but now they're stuck. Maybe they couldn't even really draw the picture. So that's powerful information for us. And then the other thing is just, this is again, the projector views. So that's why you don't see names anymore. But when I go to present, when I you know, lock student screens and ask them, please come back to my screen here. The focus, even though they're focusing on my screen, they're not focusing on just my answer. We are able to discuss everybody in the class's results. We're able to talk about the ones that are wrong and dig into why that answer might be incorrect and how we would change it to be correct and why that student might have made the mistake that they made. Because as we know, like digging into analyzing why the response is incorrect is a tremendously powerful learning opportunity. And I don't want to lose those powerful moments as we go to remote teaching by just concentrating on my screen and my answer. So how can we allow students to contribute so that, you know, we can see everybody's responses and not just the perfect solution. And so I want you to experience this drawing in action. So I'm going to ask you to draw a little bit again, but I'm also going to show the responses right away here so that you can see right now nobody's drawn. So it's blank. But as soon as somebody starts drawing, it starts coming up on my screen. So in real time, I'm going to just put it um, so that I can see a grid view. You can see in real time students drawing. So that's the power of all of this. In real time, I get all this information. It's not after they hit a submit key. There is no submit key that they have to press. <laughs> I love your drawings. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next thing. So I just want to know, how are you guys feeling so far? So go ahead and drag your dot. Let me know how you're feeling. Stacey, we have a couple of questions that I think might this might be a good time to answer. Uh, the Great. first is from Tommy Pack. How do you annotate in real time on screens so that students can see the view? And then a second question that feels very similar to that one is from Eric Newman. It says, many of my students are very shy and self-aware. Seeing their work on the board at the same time as the, quote, smart kids work would be discouraging. How do you address this? Great. So I'm going to get into the second question first, and then the first question about how do I draw while students are. Um, thank you for your <laughs> the dot going around. Um, I'm going to get into how I write on the screen while students are writing on the screen next. So that's coming up next. But um, so, you know, you mentioned I wrote, I wrote this book, Tech with Heart, and that's actually the question you asked about the shy students or the ones who are afraid of having their answer up there or who need some more time to process, like you are speaking to my heart there. Um, that was me in the classroom and that was a huge motivator behind why I started looking to technology to solve some of these answers. Um, how do we allow students to contribute, get their thoughts out there without making them feel called out um, and so to me, Pear Deck is a solution here because we give students time. Um, so, you know, you give them enough wait time to be able to write. There are two modes in Pear Deck. So you can actually do a student pace mode. Right now, I'm moving you through all the slides, but there's another mode where I can turn on student pace mode and I could give, I do this a lot of times, I give the first 10 minutes of class, it's a warm up. Students go through those slides at their own pace. Okay, so I turn that on. They go through the slides at their own pace. They get stuck on certain ones, that's fine. Usually I'm able to go around the classroom and get to the students who need it, who are stuck on a certain slide. Um, that's hard to replicate in a remote learning environment. 
but after the 10 minutes are up, then we just bring it to the board. Now, when you bring it to the board, there are no names attached to that. I realize that with handwriting, you can kind of identify who's writing what, but I will tell you in my classroom, we use this all the time and students still don't know each other's handwriting. Um, the other thing is they are writing with the, you know, the blank, the opaque slate on the Intuo. So their handwriting is a little bit different than it is even in real life. But I never call that student out. Again, that name isn't attached. All of that information, just like when we were here, there's no names here. And so it feels more comfortable to be able to talk about all the responses and, you know, it's even a wrong response. It doesn't have a name attached to it. So personally, I feel quite comfortable talking about the responses that way versus I never felt comfortable having a student come up to the board and write their answer on the board if they got it wrong. I just felt like a lot of pressure. So this to me has been a huge solution on that one. Um, again, the student pace mode might be something to explore for you and give them like 10 minutes at the beginning to um, really have enough time to do those problems. So hopefully that answered that question. And then let's get into the other one, which is my next slide. Let's talk about inking up your own Google Slides presentation as the teacher. So in this one, I'm going to model how you can be logged in at the same time as your students. So something you can do in Pear Deck is you can be logged in as both a teacher and a student at the same time. So this is really where the magic of having this second device comes in. And what I'm going to do is right now you can see I'm mirroring, but what I'm going to change to in a moment is I'm going to change my display to using this as an extended display. So as my second display, because when I do that, I can have a different screen on my tablet than I do projecting to all of the students. This isn't necessary. It's just really nice. And so I'm going to show you the nicest option that I've discovered. So what you would do is you would create pretty much all your slides, all the slides that I usually create in my classroom. I make them all drawn. Even if I don't plan to draw on the slide, I make it a drawing slide in case I want to be able to draw on that slide. So that's what I do first. I make them all drawing. So I would make a slide like this. So this is an instructional slide for me. I usually load up a couple of them as instructional slides and then other ones that are ones where I want students to interact with me. So I might want to teach this and then I'm going to ask them a follow up question. So right now I would say to students, let's see if you guys are already drawing. Okay, not many of you have drawn. I would ask them, please keep your attention on me, on my screen. Don't write, you're not writing on this slide. I'm going to teach you something. So they know that they're paying attention to my screen and they're not worrying too much. So then what I would do is log in as a student. So how I log in as a student is the same way you guys logged in today. So I'm gonna just pull up this joinpd.com and type in that code. And I'm going to just do it as on a second tab right here so you can follow along with me. Normally, again, I would just be extending that display on here so that I had the two different displays. So now skip. And so I'm able to just write on my screen as a teacher. I always make my pen tool much smaller. So I make my pen very small. And then I use whatever colors I, well, you guys can see it on my screen here. So whatever I'm writing right now on my tablet is what you guys are gonna see on the screen. And so, you know, I can say, all right, let's draw the radius outer and I'm gonna do that in red. So now on my screen, let's see, oh, I did this question wrong. It's okay. You probably, we're revolving around y equals 30, so that's way up here. So my radius outer is going to look like this. All right, if we have any math teachers there, sorry, being very informal, pretend that's 30. Um, but even if I am on the screen where I have all student responses, I can just press the show responses, and then I can just show my response. So I have some people answering the question right now. Cool great, but I can just have this up. And so I'm writing on my screen, which is a different view, but you can still see that as my students. You can see me writing in real time. And that's how I ink up any of my Google Slides. And personally, that's how I do things these days. I create everything in Google Slides, and then I just use Pear Deck, 
present, make all of them drawing, and then I log in as a student and a teacher during my session so that I'm able to write as students are able to write so that I can have my answer there in case nobody got it right, in case we need to delve into my answer and compare it to all the student responses. That's also really powerful where we can kind of pull up all the multiple, multiple responses and go through various different um, answers and compare them and say, you know, which one is better which one is, you know, correct, incorrect, and how was the student thinking versus how was I thinking about the problem? So um, another thing to do is, this is coming from a game that I just played. Of Je it was supposed to be a Jeopardy game in the classroom. Um, we couldn't play it in the classroom. We played it remotely. We played it through a Google Meet session. Students were at home. They all were solo we didn't have teams we didn't really play for points but we still answered the questions and so i made these all drawing i didn't make them multiple choice for a reason because i wanted everybody to be able to circle their response let's see if some people have circled oh definitely have some math people in here um so i wanted everybody to circle their response and it looked like this here are, this was from my actual class session. Here was students all responding. Everybody got this one right. So they were all responding and they just circled their answer so we could see if I had class consensus. And then what I did was as we went, as I went to explain it, that was when I started writing down here. So that was only when we went to the discussion part of like, okay, let's break it down. Let's make sure we all use the right process. So this is how that slide went. Everybody responded first. And then I said, all right, so this is how we're gonna break it down. And then I started writing on my screen here. And so that's kind of how it worked. Hopefully you guys are following along with me. This was another question where it was, uh, these are stacked responses. So remember when I went back here to this question type, where was the one I was asking you? Uh, I can overlay them so I can see all of them stacked on top of one another. And so that's what I did here. You can see some kids responded in blue, some in black, some in red. And I could really see how they were splitting apart um, this you know, they needed to pretty much know the area under this curve and I got to see how they were counting up their boxes, pretty much um, their thought process for how they split the shape. And it was interesting um, that so many students split up the shape in exactly the same way, which was different than the way I actually had split it up. So that was really fun to be able to talk about that, um, even though they were at home. So again, getting into this process. But I couldn't do this without having my tablet because I need to write in a lot more detail. So the only way I'm able to do this so powerfully is because I have my Wacom tablet and I'm able to handwrite and I'm able to get into the nitty gritty. All right, so we're getting to the last 15 minutes. We're gonna get to Q&A very soon. I just wanna know how you're feeling. Should we stop now? Should we go a little bit further uh, for five minutes? All right, so I think I'm gonna keep talking for, maybe I'll talk for about two to three more minutes and then we'll get into Q&A. So one more thing is um, that I really have grown as a teacher from is at the end of my lesson, in Pear Deck, there are these end of lesson templates. So if you go here into their template library, there's beginning, during, and end of lesson. I try and choose one every time for the beginning to kind of do a little warm up and an end to help them summarize their understandings and what they're taking away. And so I try and put one of these and I use the drawing slides for this and also just sometimes having them type some takeaways. And what happens at the end of that is that I can publish these takeaways. Um, it looks like this. When I end the session, 
it's not going to do anything, but I'm still scared to press it right now. When I press end the session, it's going to have this little option. Do you want to publish student takeaways and publishing student takeaways. You'll be able to see this on your screen. If you are logged in to the Pear Deck right now, it is a Google Doc and that Google Doc is shared automatically with me and the student and all the student gets is the responses they have given during the session. So they do not get their classmates responses. They get the question next to their response, whatever response they had given. So they're able to study that from that after the fact. In addition, you remember how I said that I was logged in as a student and that's how I'm writing everything? Well, that means that when I publish the takeaways, I get my own takeaway, which I have as the answer key. And then I share that Google Doc with all my students so that they can refer back to it later. Um, I think, you know, we have all different types of learners and some of them really do best when they are able to kind of look at it after the fact, the video, it was happening in real time. It was a little bit too quick for them to follow, but they're going to do best when they're able to reflect on that at their own pace and just looking at my solutions. So that's really great for both me personally and for my students, and they can also mark it up. Um, so I'm going to finish with this slide. If students are absent during a virtual meeting, I do want to just say that, you know, since we're in the middle of this crisis situation, be mindful of how you're making makeup work. If they need to actually make up that work or not, um, everybody's in a different situation right now. And we have to be careful about our policies. But when I was in the classroom, this is exactly what I did. I had, I um, recorded the if I was recording a session, um, then students could watch that session and fill out the Pear Deck afterwards, or I could just give them the takeaways that I had filled out and they could study from that. So just another great way to fill anybody in who had missed class or missed that learning opportunity. It's all digitally captured. All right, so I think we should get into the Q&A now. Sound okay. good? Sounds good, Stacey. Okay, first question. How does Flipgrid compare to Kahoot? So Kahoot is more like a game, a little game for them to play, more like uh, flashcards um, in my mind. Flipgrid is videos. So these are all videos. This is my class. I'll just show one so you get more of a sense of what it is. So students all respond here. You know what? I wonder if that question was, so they're writing and for this one, they didn't have a tablet. So they're just hovering their phone over their um, handwritten work and then talking me through the process. I'm not sure if that question was comparing, was it Flipgrid and Kahoot? Yes, that's what's written. It's okay. from Eric Newman. How does Flipgrid compare to Kahoot? Okay. Okay, that's, that's my answer to that one. Okay, the next is, um, which apps are best for students with no Wacom at home? Um, so I hope that I shared some of the answers to that of, um, you know, like, again, my students don't have a tablet at home. So we were playing this Jeopardy game and they were just circling the answer and they were writing on their piece of paper, which was in front of them, um, so that they could, you know, just know what the answer was because they need to handwrite still. Um, and so, yeah, that's my recommendation. Other than that, honestly, I'm having kids just take pictures of work and send it to me. I don't have anything magical um, for that. Handwriting is critical for those of us who are math teachers and a lot of other similar subjects. Um, so, uh, but I would say as long as you as a teacher have something like this, then I, I think we can still do really powerful stuff. Um, being able to get the content to students, being able to write back to them very immediately and quickly and being able to create very short little screencasts. And that was why I showed the Flipgrid because that allows you to create a very quick little video that goes to the student. It's not the best quality of writing. So don't get me wrong, writing on the Pear Deck is very smooth. Writing in the Flipgrid is not super smooth. It's just that, technology is not made for that. But we right now just need to get answers to our kids in the most personal way we can. And so I'm just trying to share some of the easiest options I found for that because making a screencast kind of takes a while and it's not a sustainable way to give every student who has a question a screencast back. But you know, I can, if I have a, a, a tablet, 
I can just handwrite, email them back, or create a quick little screencast for them. Okay. Yep. Eric responded and said that um, he's he's understanding now. All right. Um, from Jose, is all of this available for Keynote or any suggestions? He is a Mac guy, and so he uses Keynote a lot. I don't use, I'm a Mac person. I don't use Keynote um, ever really. So I'm not, I'm just not really sure about how the annotation tools are or if they exist, to be honest. I don't know. Okay, no problem. Uh, Linda says, any advice for content areas outside of math? Yeah, I think you could do this in any class setting. Um, actually, I was just talking to an English teacher and she's doing this all this stuff for Poetry Month. And so she is showing on her screen um, using Pear Deck, she is doing some poems and then asking them to write a similar poem side by side. They're able to do that because they are being asked the question where they just have to type in their answer. So let me just show you what that looks like in this one. This is a typing answer. So students would see it side by side. So they would be able to type while they're seeing whatever you have on the other side of your screen. And then we followed up with a question of like, it was some vocabulary stuff. And then they were just using their mouse to be able to circle and highlight any of the text um, and kind of mark it up that way. Blackout poetry, I know is another popular thing. And you could just do that through um, kind of marrying these two things together. And then you as a teacher, you know, if you're running class that, and you have the Wacom tablet, then you can really do a nitty gritty annotation of that work um, and really mark it up with handwriting, with boxing things um, and all of that stuff. Okay, um, let's do one more question. Um, how, and Linda said, great answer, thank you. <laughs> um, from Kimberly, how well does a Wacom Intuos integrate with Smart Notebook? This is another one I don't know. I don't use Smart. Okay. Technology, I don't know. Um, and then last one, Notability versus a Wacom tablet. The two things go hand in hand together. So the Notability app is really just, uh, an, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. Well, you can, you can type, but the power of Notability, it's really a drawing app. So many people know it on the iPad. It was created for the iPad first because there was the pen for the iPad. But if you have a Wacom tablet, then you're able to draw on that. And so on Notability, I have my daily, um, like I lesson plan there. I have all of my student, the student work, they submit it to me right now. They're taking pictures of it. And then I just pull that into Notability as a PDF. And then I'm able to handwrite on top of it um, as students bring things in. So let's see, I can pull that up. Are there any other questions while I'm getting that? Uh, no, we have a question about where to find Wacom One. And while you're looking that up, Stacey, in the, in the chat, I'm yeah. going to include a link to our e-store and a discount code for the people on this call so they can purchase Wacom One in our e-store. Um, it's also available at Amazon and Best Buy too. So I will put that in chat and you keep going, okay? Fantastic. So this is how my notability looks. I have a planning notebook and I also have my AP calculus. So here is a PowerPoint that I had created. Um, let's see if I still have the PowerPoint right here. So you literally just drag in the PowerPoint. Um, okay, I don't have my PowerPoint right now, but you would drag it into notability. This was a PowerPoint. It automatically kind of converts like this. And then I had already inked this one up, so it's not blank. But then I'm writing, I'm using the handwriting tool. So as you can see, there's this pen tool. And so then I can write, I can easily change the colors right here, just like that. And for all my math teachers, you'll like this, it also snaps into shape. So I can make my shapes and I can make straight lines just like that. So that's really nice. And then I have all my student work here. So as students are handing things in, um, something like this, I can just annotate their work right here. I can just, you know, check it or I can say, you know, this was incorrect. And 
uh, I can just give them feedback and then I can just export it as a PDF. And I usually just use hand back files through Google Drive. Um, that's how we exchange work through my school. But it's just, it, this is so easy for me. It just makes my workflow so great. So I do all my answer keys on here. Everything is just digital. And then no matter where I am, I have all of my work. So I keep all my answers keys in here and um, all my notes in here. Sometimes during class, you just want to whiteboard. So you just pull this up. And then when you start writing, here's my whiteboard. Like that. Any other questions? We do have a lot of questions still. Um, the discount code is in the chat, so you guys can head over to the chat to look at it. Um, I also have um, the Pear Deck also right now, you can upgrade to a free license until the end of the year if you go to pairdeck.com slash stay dash connected. Um, maybe Danielle will drop that in the chat. She's on the call. Well, we can also, um, Stacey, we're just about out of time, but what we will do is we will send everybody on this, um, on this chat and on the webinar an email that has this information that Stacey is kindly showing right now um, with the discount code and what it's good for. And then we will also um, send an email with the Pear Deck information, which Danielle just kindly added to the chat as well. Um, we have Stacy for two more webinars, and we had a lot more questions than we could answer during this call. So Stacy, what do you say if we kind of go back through those questions and answer them on your next webinar? Yeah, that would be great. And then also, please feel free to reach out to me. If you are on Twitter, um, my Twitter handle is at BuddyXO. And I also have a bunch of videos up on some of this stuff on my YouTube channel, which you can find just with my name. Um, feel free to also email me, just my whole name, Stacy Roshan at Gmail. I'm totally fine with you emailing me any follow-up questions that you have. Um, I'm here to share any experiences that I've had so far that can possibly help everybody right now. So I really appreciate everybody joining in today and I, I hope you got a lot of ideas and a lot of your questions answered. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.